Okay, we're going to get started with the next section. Um, for This is the Cloud Containers and DevOps track. Our next speaker is Hector Martinez. He's a senior engineer at Collabora and also a Debian developer. And he's going to be talking to us, to, to us today about orchestrating continuous integration through containers. So without further ado, Hector. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed the talk. If you have any talk, feel free to interrupt me, and we can uh, discuss whatever you, you um, questions you have. I also need to apologize because I was sick this morning and I couldn't prepare properly the all I wanted to do. But let's let's see what uh, we can get to. So, as the presenter said, I'm uh, Hector Oron, Oron Martinez. I'm from Spain, and I contribute to the Debian project. It's a community uh, project uh, run by volunteers. So if you have free time, feel free to join. We're also having a Debian conference in Taiwan this summer. So if you are nearby, feel free to register. The re registration is open, and then you can come to DevConf in Taiwan and live the Debian developer experience. Uh, I'm also working for a paid job at Collabora, which is a consultancy company on open source. Uh, we do uh, graphics, we're, we're upstream for Wayland, uh, which is a graphic stack to replace uh, Xorg and GStreamer, WebKit. We also build uh, Debian derivatives. And I'm going to present here today uh, how a pipeline that you can easily uh, start and um, uh, you can use it to build your own projects, your applications, derivatives, or whatever you, uh, whatever projects or whatever uh, is suitable for you. So uh, we'll discuss what's continuous integration. Everyone familiar with this term? <laughs> and uh, uh, what are the containers? Do you all know what what containers is? And how, we, how can we build a pipeline with a lot of containers and get something out of that? So that's, that'll be the topic for this talk. So continuous integration, it's, uh, it's having one tree that a lot of developers uh, committing to this tree, wanting to merge uh, into a shared mainline, mainline tree. Every, all the source, and then suddenly one developer adds a feature but breaks another one, and people just um, uh, projects run into chaos because uh, the the mainline tree is broken because too many too many things at the same time. Uh, there is not enough time to test and validate all the changes. So this is uh, uh, continuous integration needs need, uh, tries to fix this kind of uh, problems. So uh, what are the best practices for uh, continuous integration? Is uh, you maintain a code repository and automate uh, a build of the project, of your application. And, um, and then you need to write some uh, self-testing, some tests that you can run after your code is built to validate it, so everyone can commit to it every day. Um, and then every commit that goes into mainline needs to be uh, built and validated, and it needs to be fast. So, and then if you, it's possible, you want to test this on a production environment, like you have a new application that runs on some uh, specific hardware, and then you want to deploy this application in this specific hardware and, um, and test if it's working or not and see if there are any regressions. So, um, and then it's, it needs to be, uh, to developers, needs to be available or uh, deliverable. So all the uh, nightly builds, so people can have the latest and test, work with the latest. And, um, and every, everyone should be able to have access to this latest build. And, um, and then automate the deployment of the application to the 
to the hardware. So it sounds like too many things to consider, but maybe we can, with thanks to containers and technologies available, we can do this like really, really fast, easier than that we might expect. And we'll, we'll see later what, what's the suggested pipeline. Let's talk first about what are containers. Everyone familiar with the term, probably? Um, so it's a system level virtualization which depends on name, namespaces and C groups. So it, uh, virtualization, uh, KVM, it, it, it boots uh, its own kernel and you need an hypervisor and then it takes uh, some seconds to minutes to, to get a machine up. But with uh, this technology, is uh, with some milliseconds, you just run a process and have a, a contained uh, process space. And uh, uh, the, you can run many more containers in a system than uh, uh, KVMs or virtual machines. So it's, it's for some cases, it's very, very useful. So uh, here is a suggested uh, continuous integration uh, pipeline, the components or the blocks that, that you can put together. So you first you need a code review system. So everyone developing the code can commit into this code. And then you need an uh, application build system. And after, after you build the application, it's nice to, to package this as an RPM or as a Debian package or, uh, or whatever OS you use. So it's easy to integrate this application into your OS. And if it's, what that gets into a repository with many uh, other packages, and with all these packages, you can build an image of, of your, uh, for your target device. And then with this image, you can automate the test, test system. You can run unit tests, a system tests, a smoke tests, there are many different kinds of tests that you can run. And also I added, I think it's very important uh, uh, but I added an item about license checks because many people uh, is using, is building, is working on free open source, but they are building on top of a cro a proprietary or closed source components, and they don't notice. They think they are because they have, they depend on a library. I'm going to use this library, which is very good, but then the, this library depends on something else, which is proprietary. So at the end, your code is depending on something which is closed source. And you, you think you, are, you, you have a, a free open source application, but it's really not because uh, there's a dependency up in the chain that is proprietary. So the, if you check for that, that would be nice. Uh, for example, a, a GitHub recently opened license set. So you, you can check for Go packages and I think Ruby and uh, some others, it just checks the chain of, of, of the dependencies so you know what your license, if they are all clear. So you can build this into a product and you are fine to, to ship it or distribute it. Um, so here are some suggested technologies that we can use to implement these uh, uh, features I was talking about. So for code review, there are many different like uh, technologies like Gerrit, Fabricator, GitLab. Um, for the application build system, you can use J Jenkins. You can use a BuildBot. For a package build system uh, to integrate with uh, an OS, you can use Open Build Service, we call OBS. Uh, we did a, a presentation yesterday so if you were not there, you might refer to it in a video or, or the slides in the, from the conference. We had also a work, workshop, so we said, explain a little bit how to set up OBS so you can build a package against many different distributions with only one source. And then uh, you can build uh, your image. Uh, so Jenkins probably is very useful for this you can, because everyone builds images creating their own scripts. And, and it's quite a mess. There is no one single tool. So we, 
we created yet another tool to, to build images which we call Devos that you can find in the Debian repositories. And uh, this way you describe what your image you like it to be like with a recipe. We call it with this a YAML description. And then uh, with this YAML description, you are able to build this image. So if, if, you are, if, you don't have, if you're thinking on building an image and you don't yet have craft all your scripts together, maybe it's worth that you have a look to this tool. And then for test system, you can run uh, Jenkins as well, or with you, some, you write some test cases and have a virtual machine or a container and you can test. Or if you want to deploy on, on real hardware, there's a Linaro uh, automated validation tool which is called Lava. I don't know if you're familiar with Lava, but it's quite interesting as well. And then for the license check, uh, Linux Foundation has a, maintains a tool, it's called Fosology which is quite nice as well. It keeps a database and keeps all, all the license that you have. So let's, uh, let's talk about a little bit about the, the architecture. So Jen what is Jenkins? I don't know if you're familiar with all these technologies. So I, with the ones I put in, the, um, in bold letters, I'm going to comment a little bit. So Jenkins is a master. Uh, server and it's for me it's like a cron, you know, cr a cron job, right? So it's cron job in a, on asteroids. You can uh, configure and do many, uh, many tasks. You can, and then that's why the the logo is like a serving uh, master. And then you you can have nodes which are the slaves in many different uh, OS like uh, Windows or Apple or Linux. And so you can run your application and deploy on many different operating systems, depending on the slaves you want to support. So the Open Build service, it's also um, it's a command line tool, an API that you can drive with this command line tool, and there's a, a backend server which it just creates the environment to build packages, and build a package and creates repositories and publish these packages into repositories. So it's, it makes it very easy to manage uh, uh, distributions, Linux distributions. Um, Fosology. Fosology, uh, you upload your upstream, your tarball with sources, and then you can run agents which uh, scan these tarballs and gives you the and then checks for the licenses of the software, and then you can check these licenses afterwards. And it can provide you with a report on SPDX format or uh, DEP5, it's a Debian format as well. You can ask, uh, and then uh, you can validate these reports and see that all the licenses are correct. And then Lava is the uh, te for testing on real hardware. It's, <coughs> it's a scheduler, it's also like a Jenkins thing that you can uh, send to dispatchers that you can have in many uh, different places. Like for example, we're contributing to kernel CI. I don't know if you, you heard about kernelci.org, but it's uh, many different companies have uh, lab, uh, labs on their uh, offices or people at their homes, and they are connected to a single master, which is kernelci.org. And, and they hook uh, all these little the ARM devices or hardware that you care about. So because ARM uh, development boards is quite a big spectrum that, that we have, so Raspberry Pis or uh, Sabre Lights, Exynos boards, Dragon Balls. I mean, there are uh, a lot of boards. So uh, this project, Kernel CI, wants to uh, smoke test, boot a kernel on every target, on every change that happens in the kernel. So you verify and validate that the kernel boot will boot on your next board. So this is a, it's a community project as well, and it's quite useful for the kernel validation. But you can run it for your own purposes as well and try to deploy this on your device. So all these technologies sound very complex and uh, many different things to do. But uh, thanks to containers, it's very easy to deliver this. So you can 
uh, Docker Hub has uh, Jenkins. I recommend to you need to define a Jenkins job, and I recommend to look up the pipelines in Jenkins. It's a you look up the documentation, and it's um, if you're going to do like a complex uh, job for it. So you just define a job, and then you can have a Jenkins file where you can describe your pipeline, and then you can have like different steps, like uh, or like a, a building um, building the image, or you can uh, check the image, or you can anyway. The, you can have a look to that. It's I won't I won't talk about this uh, in this talk. And then Open Build Service, we uh, at Collabora we have a, a, the scripts, the Docker file to create the Docker files. I, I plan to upload to Docker, but didn't have access yet to the Collabora space. But it soon be at, Do at Docker OBS in uh, in Docker Hub. And for Sology also they have Docker image you can run, and also Lava. And and probably GitLab as well. So uh, I wanted to do a demo. I don't know if it's going to to work to see how we can set up the, all this pipeline in in the minutes we have left here. So uh, uh, I want to explain here that you you have a Jenkins the the pipeline basically you keep your sources in in GitLab or you get packages from Debian. And you can combine these two, and get through Jenkins can pull these uh, sources and, and packages and fit those into the uh, OS build machine, which is Open Build Service. And then you can uh, build an image with Jenkins and deploy on Lava and test that. And then you can test your um, license of the repositories with a Fosology tool. So uh, let's try to do a minute. I think I have five minutes or so. So let's try to see if if I have a if I'm able to to get this started at least. So here I show there is no uh, Docker containers running, and then uh, I was stopping. Okay, and then I have a composer file. This is the Docker OBS thing, and then this is going to start. Um, oops. It's going to start the OBS server and the OBS API and the worker, and then you get the whole uh, system <laughs> starting. It's uh, we uh, Yesterday we had a talk and explained how to set up uh, OBS like from packages and the configuration, and it was, it took uh, quite a while. But with Docker you just started and it should be running. Let me see. Because this setup is a bit. Ah, uh, here. Yeah. So, I don't know if it says the IP address somewhere. Yeah, here. You can see 172.23.0.23. So, we go to the web browser. And one, see, I don't get this here, so 172.23.0.3, that's it. And then let's try on the certificate. Of course, we didn't set up the proper certificate. And uh, let's accept this because it's running on local host. Oh, okay, 
there's an error because uh, probably I loaded a volume that I had because it's a demo, doesn't work, but if you check out the tree, build the Docker images, and at least you get the system started and the application is running. So that's one of the things. And then because now this is running on, 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 uh, on these ports, it's taking on the other uh, Docker containers. So all this part, I, I wasn't able to, to prepare so it, it, it worked all together. But essentially, you can start uh, oh, oh, here. Uh, your lava container as well. So here is lava in uh, running on localhost. And then you have, here I didn't start the lava, but. Here is the lava docker, but if I see, I have these containers running now, which is the OBS, and then if I run lava, so it cannot connect because it's on running. The port is already taken by OBS, so you need to uh, align all. Everything. Well, this is the part I was not able to do, but I mean it's okay. You, I think you get the idea, right? So I could go and stop the Docker, the OBS. And, and then once it stops, and probably we can run the the lava container. It's all in the web, in these websites, well documented, so it's very easy to to get it started. So here it is started now. So you get lava running on this port, right? Yeah. And then you need the 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 hard bit now is that you need to understand how to run this and configure this software, how to write the test cases. You might find examples online. Let's see, this is a scheduler. You can connect all your devices, all your jobs. Then you might want to to have, see, it's already defined some uh, some jobs here with a QMU uh, to, to boot a kernel on QMU and test it. And, uh, all the devices, so you have a lava slave, which is a virtual machine based on QMU. And um, okay, so and then uh, let me it. I go okay here. Uh, here it's going to start a Jenkins container, but it's also uh, the, the ports are taken. Okay, we're running out of time, but you can run uh, Fosology. Let me show you a list, the make file here. So you have a here, this is to build the, you can build the OBS images, but here to run the Jenkins is one command line and you set up the ports accordingly and it should just work. OBS and then Fosology also just one command line and you get Fosology. And then you can start playing on how, how to configure this and how to make your configuration suitable for your needs. So, Um, mm, mm, mm. Let's go back to the presentation. So I don't know if you have any questions, but uh, thank you for attending, and I hope you enjoy uh, these minutes. Thank you for taking your time and, and listen to uh, this uh, presentation. So thanks.
Hello, you have quick questions. Maybe you can uh, ask me around. I, I'll be around. Or if you, if we have some time, maybe you can talk. There's no time. So. Okay, sorry, there's no time. So, feel free to.